हेलो एवरी वन वंस अगेन वेलकम टू पी एम नेटवर्किंग होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट गैस टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रबल शूट वन रियल टाइम इशू राइट वी आर गोइंग टू ट्रबल शूट वन रियल टाइम नेटवर्क ट्रबल शूटिंग सी अपार्ट फ्रॉम ट्रबल शूटिंग वी विल ऑल्सो डिस्कस वन सेनारियो बेस्ड नेटवर्क इंजीनियर इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन बिकॉज वन ऑफ माई पेड स्टूडेंट रिसीव दिस क्वेश्चन इन इंटरव्यू right interviewer asked to him this question in interview and he share the question with me and i am going to share same question with you today in this video okay and we will also discuss some advanced concept of acl in this video access control list right so make sure guys if you are a network engineer or if you are planning to become a network engineer you will watch this video till the end now without wasting our time let's begin see before discussing problem what is problem over here let me make you familiar with this topology so as you can see in this topology i have three router router 1 router 2 router 3 let's say router 3 is connected with isp or let with any other network okay or lib this is my topology between router 1 and router 2 i am using 12 network 12.1.1.0/24 between router 2 and router 3 i am using 23 network 23.1.1.0/24 and i have one lan on router number 1 one lan on router 2 one lan on router number 3 here we are running subnet 10.1.1.0/24 here i am running subnet 20.1.1.0/24 here i am running subnet 30.1.1.0/24 for the reachability between these routers i am running the routing protocol eagrp eagrp es number 10 eagrp es number 10 right so this is my scenario now try to understand what is problem over here right so see guys problem is what engineer has configured the acl on router number 2 on r2 just to allow pc1 to telnet r2 right engineer has configured access control list on router number 2 to allow only pc1 to access R2 through telnet, right? PC2 or this PC or this PC or this router and this router, these devices should not be able to access R2 through telnet. Let's say PC1 is my network admin. This is network admin, and only PC1 should be able to access R2 through telnet. But see, problem is what? But after that, after applying access control list on router number two, user from this network 10.1.1.0/24 network are not able to communicate with user in this network 20.1.1.0/24. 10 network is this one, 20 network is this one, as well as 30 network, right? So user from 10 network is not able to communicate with 20 network, as well as user from 10 networks are not able to communicate with 30 networks. So as a network engineer, you need to troubleshoot the scenario. and guys before trouble shooting right let me share the question right interview question like how interviewer can ask you the question interviewer can also ask you like how to configure acl on router number 2 so that only pc 1 should be able to access r2 through telnet and no other device can access telnet uh, can take telnet of r2 right means question is like which type of acl you will configure as you know we have two types of acl right acl standard acl and extended acl so which type of acl you will apply over here and most of the people are saying in this scenario i will apply extended acl extended acl but this is guys wrong answer this is wrong answer always keep in mind whenever we will use access control list for management plane traffic we should use standard acl you know you have to learn the logic behind these two types of acl like why we have two types of acl standard and extended right in which scenario i will apply standard acl in which scenario i will apply extended acl right in real time in running network in production network right what is the logic behind standard acl what is the logic behind extended acl right as i told you that for management plane traffic you should use a standard acl right then why why so see most of the people are saying in this scenario i will configure extended acl right and then as you know we have two types two method to call access control list or to apply access control list right one is first one is ip access group as you know when you apply access list on interface you will use this method another method method is access class later on cisco come with 
this feature access class feature so on router number two you will call acl by using this method access group method or access class method right so if you know the answer then you will never say extended acl and i will you know call the acl with the help of this method ip access group here we should apply standard acl and we should call the acl with the help of this method access class method note ip access group method because see if i will apply extended acl over here try to understand the problem and you will apply with this method ip access group then what problem will occur over here and same problem is here in the topology right same problem is here in the topology see if you will configure extended acl on router number two how you will create acl you will run this command over here ip access list access list then extend it and then number 101 after that you will run this command permit permit ho permit tcp host 10.1.1.1 and destination any because we have multiple ip addresses on router number two and after that equal to port number 23 if you are thinking that i will apply access control list like this on router number two to allow only pc1 to telnet r2 then guys you are wrong you are wrong because what this 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 statement will do this statement will block all other services like as you know there is implicit deny in access control list what it mean what it mean what is the meaning of implicit deny it means if you are allowing only one traffic if you are allowing only one traffic access control will access control list will automatically deny all other traffic or if you are denying only one traffic access control list will deny all other traffic this is implicit deny and by default implicit deny is there in access control list so if we have permit only one host automatically all other hosts are denied right and all others protocols are denied so now these user can definitely not communicate with this user or this user right we have deny all the other traffic so what some people are thinking that here i will run one more command here i, I will run this command permit ip any any now guys if you will run this command permit ip any any then what will happen <laughs> r2 will allow all other traffic to take telnet to telnet to take telnet of r2 now r3 can also access r2 through telnet r1 can also access r2 through telnet this pc can also access this pc can also access this pc can also access right and you know after if you you have created this this statement these two statement now you will apply these two statement on all the interfaces of router 2 right on f0 slash 0 also and f1 slash 1 also and on f1 slash 0 also right means any user can access r2 through telnet now so this is the wrong method to configure acl so that only pc1 should be able to access r2 through telnet see now i am going to troubleshoot the scenario let me take you to troubleshooting part see i have access of all devices here pc1 router1 and you can see eagrp neighborship is flapping between router1 and router2 on router number 2 router number three also you can see a grp neighborship is flapping right so ip a grp neighbor q count is one on router number one also so ip a grp neighbor q count is one a grp neighborship is flapping over here right and let me take you to pc1 from pc1 let me ping 12.1.1.2 router 2 this is ip address of r2 see i am not able to ping 12.2 right let me telnet telnet 12.1.1.2 yes i am able to telnet means pc1 is able to access router number 2 through telnet but can pc1 communicate with lan users other lan users 20.1.1.100 no shipping is not working means 10 networks users of 10 networks are not able to communicate with users of 20 network in the same way with 30 networks lan 3 c ping is not working because of extended acl on router number two let me take you to r2 so so ip access list so see here i have one access control list with number 101 extended acl we have some matches as well 111 
See, permit TCP host 10.1.1.1 destination any equal to port number till net equal to port number till net this is the reason why router 2 is denying all other traffic right it will allow only this user where source is this one destination is any and port number is equal to 23 till net that is only applied on these interfaces on any interface like so run interface f0 slash 0 you can see access control list is applied on this interface also access list is apply on 1 slash 0 also here you can see and access list is apply on 1 slash 1 also you can see so on these three interfaces which traffic is allow only traffic where source is this particular destination is any and port number is equal to what 23 so this is the reason why pc1 is not able to communicate with any other user ping 20.1.1.100 see i am not able to ping right now on router number two if you are thinking let's run permit ip any any command so let me take you to again in my access list extend it number 101 and here i am going to say permit ip any any now what will happen now definitely pc1 can ping to 20.100 soon ping will work you can see ping is working now ping is working i can ping 30 also 30 also right and i can telnet also telnet 12.1.1.2 telnet is also working fine right but you can see from router number 3 also i can telnet telnet 23.1.1.2 see i am able to telnet r2 from r3 also right so your requirement was what only pc1 should be able to access r2 through telnet because pc1 is my network admin right so this is not the correct configuration right guys and here on router number two you can see so run interface f 0 slash 0 let's say you have call access control list with the help of access group so this is the problem with access group that's why Cisco come with access class definitely if you want to learn each and everything about access control list guys you have to enroll yourself for paid batch that is not possible over here right on YouTube to make you understand everything about ACL right because ACL is lengthy topic you need to learn lots of concept right standard ACL extended ACL you have to understand the logic behind each ACL at why we have two types of ACL in production network where we will apply AC, standard ACL because we never use a standard ACL to block or to allow data plane traffic a standard ACL is for management plane traffic right extended ACL is for data plane traffic we can not use extended ACL for management plane traffic let's say here this router is connected with ISP and on ISP we have one loopback 8.8.8.8 let's say I want uh, you know PC1 should not be able to ping 8.8.8 here you can configure a standard ACL right IP access list standard number 10 and deny source this one right and you will apply the ACL on this interface or on this interface but think guys in real time why I will deny my you know user to not access 8.8.8 .8 .8. you will never use a standard ACL like this on router number 1 or router number 2 or router number 3 in real time in the production network getting my point maybe my requirement can be you know this user should have limited access of internet then I have to configure extended ACL for the limitation I have to configure extended ACL not extended ACL right so if I want to limit you know on, on, on uh, for PC1 right PC1 should have limited access to internet I have to create extended ACL on, not extended ACL leave these things let's come to our topic on router number two how we should configure access control list then first of all let me remove this ACL configuration interface range f0 slash 0 f1 slash 0 as well as f1 slash 1 said no ip access group number 101 direction in and then say no ip access list extended 101 fine now do so ip access list now we don't have any access list over here now see i'm going to create a standard acl ip access list 
standard let's say number 10 and then I am going to say permit host 10.1.1.1 right and now I will apply this access control list on on control plane on CPU not on the interface if you are applying a ACL on interface that means we are blocking control plane as well as data plane as well as management plane right but if you will apply this ACL on control plane directly on line VTY right it will not impact to user data so I am going to apply it on line VTY 04 line VTY 04 and then say access class here we can use this method access class then number 10 and in which direction you want to apply in in direction that's it now you can see here config t here here on router number 2 so ip eagrp neighbor now you can see eagrp neighborship is working fine right q count is 0 right and so ip route eagrp we are learning prefixes as well on router number 1 also so ip eagrp neighbor eagrp is working fine so ip route eagrp we are learning prefixes as well and router number 3 also so ip route eagrp correct now let me ping from pc1 to user in lan2 and lan3 ping ping 20.1.1.100 see i am able to ping ping 30.1.1.100 see i am able to ping right and telnet 12.1.1.2 i'm able to access r2 as well through telnet and now again i'm going to telnet from router number 3 telnet 23.1.1.2 see i am not able to telnet router 2 so this is how you should configure acl on router number 2 so that only pc1 can access r2 through telnet right no other user can access you know r2 through telnet now right so this was guys one small troubleshooting right a small concept of access control list right how you should apply acl so as you know we have two types of acl extended acl extended acl again we have two method to call acl one is ip access group another one is ip sorry class list class list right so you should have knowledge about each type of acl and each method to call access control list guys if you have learned something from this video now it's your responsibility to like this video if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel we will meet soon in next video till then stay safe bye bye guys thanks for watching that's all for today